Howdy folks, I'm gonna try really hard to stay calm uh, when I show you this and try not to get too giddy um, because I'm so excited about uh, this, these two plugins working together. One is for Notable and one is for Link Reader in ChatGPT. We will make sure to link either around me or um, below in the notes um, the video that we have on how to use Link Reader for things like link analysis for like SEOs and content people. What I'm about to show you is going to um, take things to a whole new level. So let me just start off by saying, yeah, load this data set, this, what does this even mean, Will? What are you showing me? Let me walk you through what I'm about to show you. So first of all, this guy, the Pi Coach. If you watch this video from about 250 to about 550, you are going to get a glimpse into the power of something that I think is transformational, and I'm gonna walk you through it right now. So what the heck is Notable? This is the first thing. So you know what ChatGPT is, you know what plugins are. You gotta create an account at Notable. If you know how to click sign in or sign up, and then you know how to take a file and click upload inside of their project and upload it, you're done. I don't even know what EDA is. I don't even really know fully what Notable does, but I do know when I see really cool stuff that I wanna share with people. So I took, uh, I went to SEMrush, got some ranked data for SEER, dropped it into Notable. Notable lets you just click upload a file. It was that simple. Now I've got a CSV sitting here of their data. Nothing that innovative so far, but let me show you what's possible with these two plugins when you do this. So, like I said, I had to learn how to load in my data set and my project, but it's basically just copying URLs. When you do it, Notable will start to run, and then it'll say, ah, okay, this data set has been successfully loaded into your notebook, and it shows me all my columns. Looks pretty good, right? But this isn't anything all that great. So I went, all right, for the keyword Google Search Console, I guess SEER ranks for that somewhere in the top 100. In index zero, visit the URL that's in that list using the enabled link reader plugin. And that's my URL, right? Or whatever it is, Search Console, okay? So it starts doing it and it makes a synopsis. And I'm like, oh, you can stop. So I stopped the work because it did exactly what I, did, what I wanted it to do. I then said, make me a table with only index zero for now, but take the URL and then crawl it and then put the synopsis in the table. It runs, ah, wait, 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 let me put it here. Here it is. It runs, there's the synopsis of the page. Now let's take a step back. What just happened is I now don't have to use SEMrush to click on all the links. You can now stop clicking on links inside of reports. You suck that data in, put it into Notable, connect it to ChatGPT4, connect these two plugins, and now I'm getting a synopsis of what that article is about right in all of my columns when I go to export this thing and start working on it. All right. So I said, based on that synopsis, can you add some other columns? Because now you've already used a credit with Link Reader. Why not squeeze all the value you can out of it? So I say, all right, how about this? Add another column that tells me where in the purchase journey you think someone is. Add another column saying whether the content is beginning, beginner, intermediate, or advanced. And then add another column that tells me if, I, um, if it should apply to enterprise, small, medium businesses, or both. All of these things would help direct my marketing team to focus on our areas for the quarter. Maybe we're going after advanced and enterprise. Great, we would know whether or not that content is there. And guess what we have here? We've got the synopsis and we've got what, what ChatGPT thinks the journey stage is, the content level and the company size, all right? And of course, if you don't like the way it's doing it, don't quit, train it. Tell it, what it, tell it what you believe advanced content is. Feed a bunch of content at it that you say is advanced and then have it come back and rerun to see if it fits what you actually believe, but don't give up. All right, so then I said, all right, show me a couple of URLs here, right? And it gave me five of them, all right? And just the normal search volume is all I ask for. I ask for search volume, position, whatever. It gives me the five links. I go, now can you give me the columns I asked for and crawl all the URLs and do all the work I asked you to do before? And you can see I'm being like kind of vague. I'm like, hey, the columns I asked for before, right? And you can see Link Reader is gonna crawl all five of those URLs and the first time it failed. I wonder if the second time it'll update my, uh, my notebook and my table, let's see. All right, y'all, I think it ran this time. So uh, now it took, 
The keyword, the rank, the URL, and the volume gave me a synopsis. You can see, I know this is a little hard to see, but it's giving me where in the purchase journey it is. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I'm not here to tell you if it's right or wrong. I'm here to show you what's possible when you can no longer have to crawl a link and click it and then to get all this information. And you can ask it whatever you most care about. Imagine doing this for all your paid search competitors, um, paid landing pages and comparing it to yours. There is so much opportunity here that I'm just feel like I'm getting started, but I'm over my typical three to four minute time. So let's go ahead and just put everything else in a part two as I continue to work this out. Ooh, yeah. Part two, I'm gonna show you one quick thing I'll show it to you right now, because I gotta show it to you. It's freaking nuts. The darn thing also can take instructions to make uh, reports for you. Um, see all these little things here? I said, hey, can you put, can you make me a graph that shows this trend over time? It did it. I said, hey, can you put a label on that graph? Hey, can you do my previous rank versus my current rank for all these groupings? Also all possible. And I literally did it sitting right here. So I'm able to say, yes, yeah, screw it. We're going to go a little bit late here. Um, I'm going to say, um, can you create a graph for me that shows me my number of rankings in the top 20 for keywords that does not contain eh, for rankings in one through 10, 11 through 20, and 21 through 30 in a bar chart summing up search volume. Why not? Like, I have no idea what that even means. But my goal is to show you that you can create graphs, you can have it do labels, you can have it change your colors to make it flyers or eagles colors. It doesn't actually matter. If you've got data and that includes numbers, then you can start to use this tool. Gotta give a big shout out to my coworker, um, Jordan Strauss. Uh, he has uh, helped me to understand how some of these tools work. I have only done this four or five times, guys. In four or five usages, I'm able to show you this, right? So imagine a world where if I use this for a little bit longer, what I'll be able to show you later. So y'all work with it, I'll work with it. Check this out, that's freaking nuts, right? How about you give me labels on my data and make this graph flyers colors? And let's just say Philadelphia flyers colors. Who cares about the misspelling? So like, Technically, ChatGPT should know the colors of the flyers, right? It's orange and black. Let's see if it can actually give me the labels and change it. And I'm just showing you all this just as a way to show you how much is there. I don't care if the numbers are right or wrong right now. I'm trying to show you how much is possible here. And this is all being done with this notebook auto writing the Python that is required to do everything that you just saw. Oh, boo, man, those aren't flyers colors. <laughs> oh, well, can't wait to see you guys on the next one. Let's keep it rocking.